And yesterday, you ladies are thinking very right. And I was also thinking, here's a member of parliament, yeah. number one, mm -hmm. who is also a minister of state. Mm -hmm. If you're a member of parliament, it means that you belong, you're an ex-official member of the district, you know, governing body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the municipal assembly, whatever it is. Now, it is the district chief executive of the MCE who is the boss of the security of the area. So, you have some privileges. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were, as a member of parliament, going to a constituency, going to a registration center, hmm. and you had inclination of any threat on your life, the first option is to call the police. Mm. The first option is to call at least your district security boss yeah. and say, I am going to police station A, I feel threatened, mm. can I get some police escort? Because yesterday I saw police yeah. around here. Yeah. Can I get police escort? Can I get uh, a patrol team? Mm. Whatever it is. That's the first one. Mm. That's the first the point, second yeah. option is that for this registration that is ongoing, there is that uh, what, what you call provision of a challenge form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And At she, the that you could and she mm. was in parliament when that law was passed. Mm. So mm. she, as a member of parliament, is supposed to have known that there's a constitutional instrument with which the electoral commission is working with mm -hmm. that says you have the privilege of filing a, 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 con, a complaint form that person A, B, C, and D are not supposed uh, to not. be registering here and they are registering. And you have and you have representatives, okay, at the polling station. Mm -hmm. She didn't use that option. Mm. The first option that came into her mind was that it was in self-defense. And you are free to defend yourself mm -hmm. if you have a registered gun. Right. But there are 12 golden rules of owning a gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The last but two or three options is where you pick up the gun and, and fire. fire. Mm. Now, why was it the first option? option. Yeah. Why was exactly. it? Exactly. Imagine if I also take my gun to the to the registration center. And everybody everybody brings a gun. And at the least provocation, we say, we want to defend ourselves. Yeah. Can you imagine? We will what have a fun fair. Yeah. yeah. We everybody will have a fun fair. And to think that And to the Ghana Police died. Service, I think that, and I said this when Mr. Damte at um, Asin South went to do that demonstration. I said it when Honorable Carlos Ahinkra went to hug people and all of that. I say, until they set an example with someone, they will lose their footing on what it is Election day proper. This is just dress rehearsal. Hmm. Anyway, hmm. so let's cross over to Skype and we're speaking to a security analyst, Mr. Adam Bona, to tell us what he makes of this and what the implications are looking at the fact that Madam Hawa uh, Kumsin, who is the Minister for Special Development Initiatives, has admitted that she actually fired that gunshot. Good morning, Mr. Adam Bona. Adam Bona, can you hear me? And good morning to your viewers. Good morning. And thank Hello, you for joining you. us morning. this morning. Now, based on Madam Hawa Kumsen's, uh, Kumsen's admission yesterday, what do you make of the situation and the points where she says that she fired the gunshot? Well, I, I, it's shameful. It's shameful to our democracy. It's shameful to, you know, the people where she represents, I mean, uh, she's a shame to the people, the area she's representing. And she's a shame, I mean, if you ask me, to the, the, the legislative arm of government. Uh, you know, most importantly, also, she's not fit, probably not fit to be a member of the executive arm of this government. Mm. She has admitted openly that she fired the shots to scare people off. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm, I'm, I have been thinking since I, this news, I mean, I'm not actually in the jurisdiction, but when I got this information, I asked myself a lot of questions. This is someone who is entitled to an armed uh, guard, a police guard. Yeah. And so what was her assessment of the situation? What would make her fire shots at, you know, a civilian populated area as, as a, Minister of State, and for that matter, I don't want to, uh, you know, sound some way, but probably also a disgrace to womanhood, because then one would have expected that this is something that usually the men would do, and when there are women around, we all would be complaining that you did this, knowing very well that some women would be fearful of gunshots and all that. But mm -hmm. if a woman, you know, comes out, a woman, a, you know, a Minister of State, comes out to say, I pulled out my gun and fired. 
I'm expecting that. I think there's going to be cabinet today. She should be fired. Uh, she should be dismissed. I don't know. As for the MPs, uh, it's difficult to ask the you know member you know parliament to probably sack them from parliament. But I believe that as taxpayers, we can call for this woman to be dismissed because mm. she is not a very good example of our cherished democracy. Because this is a precursor to probably what we should be expecting in December 7. Because then what she's saying is that those who would feel threatened mm. should take their firearms to, you know, the polling centers. And I yeah. would say that it's only cowards who, you know, at the least provocation would pull out their guns and shoot. I mean, anyone who understands us taking probably firearms training, you are told that mm -hmm. you should restrain yourself very well. So I don't know how she was bold enough. She didn't come out to say, I am a licensed you know, carrier of a weapon. Yeah. She doesn't actually even know the, that the there gun. are some, you know, regulations with regards to firing. You need to get some authority from what you call the IGB. Okay. If you wanted to display, yes. If you go into it, I don't have it here, but before you do some of it, because from what she said, her own admission, it means that she's falling foul of a certain law because you don't mm. fire your gun to scare people. She's not a park ranger. She's not in the safari where, you know, a lion or maybe a rhino is, you know, trying to attack and then you fire into the air for the rhinos or the lions to mm -hmm. run. This is, a, you know, civilian populated area to pull out your gun and fire. And I saw videos of her arguing with, I think, the... The, the, the NDC uh, parliamentary uh, candidate, uh, yes, not for you. Yes, I was thinking that this is, you have the incumbent. You should restrain yourself. Apart from being the incumbent, you are also a minister of state. Absolutely. So restrain yourself. But, but, but I, I have asked, maybe she was under the influence. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was under the influence. Is that what you say? She was under the influence of some substances. Okay, but Mr. Adabuna, if you can just run us through the rules, maybe not all of them because of time constraints, but what are the rules to wielding firearms, and at what point should you necessarily fire? Well, at, at what point should you? The rules, I mean, you, you, you keep it when you feel probably you come under severe threat, then you pull it out. Even that, you need to understand under what circumstances, uh, you know, why would you be taking your firearm to an area where uh, there will be women, children, vulnerable people. I mean, uh, my old lady, I'm with her at the moment. She can hardly walk. I took her to a registration center to register. You can imagine if this woman comes in. So the, the rules are very simple. Mm. It is you acquire a firearm either for game, either for hunting, or for festive occasions where festivals and the rest, mm. or you acquire a firearm for self-protection. And the firearm is licensed to people who are mentally sane, the firearm is licensed to people who probably, for one reason or the other, the police feels that these people would have to defend themselves because at one, you know, at, at a particular point, someone attempted assassinating them or killing them. And others sometimes go in to acquire the firearm for the show of it. And so for a minister of state, no one, I mean, the law doesn't forbid her from carrying a firearm, mm. but under the circumstances, you are going into a civilian populated area. She was supposed to go with her police guard, if she, I'm sure she's supposed to have one, per the rules. She's supposed to have one. And apart from that, there is a certain, you know, regulation within the, you know, handling of firearm that before you pick your firearm and shoot it, I mean, uh, there are certain, depending on how you're able to defend yourself, you are supposed to actually even get an explicit uh, what do you call it, permission from the IGP to do that. Okay. And with this, what if, uh, using her own admission that she fired because she wanted to scare the people away, I would want to, uh, you know, believe that she needed the permission of probably the IGP to have even done that. Okay. To go into uh, carry, carrying of firearms and all that. Mr. Adam Bonner, how does this play into the fight against gun violence? And of course, moving into elections 2020, what impact does this particular situation have on elections? Well, you know, very, very dark consequences if this woman is not punished. Because then what happens is that she, she openly displayed a firearm, not like the Stone Boy Shatawale issue where they are facing prosecution. Uh, is it Shatawale who pulled the gun? He didn't even fire it. 
Uh, no, it was the other. Is uh, the Stone Boy who pulled the gun? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. Are, it was Stone they Boy. Facing, yes, they are supposed to be facing prosecution for just display of firearms in a, uh, you know, civilian populated area. Mm. And so, mine is that if this woman is not punished, people will come to this state, you know, uh, polling centers or yeah, polling centers, and believing that. I mean, well, someone did it and never got punished. So I can equally do it and not get punished. Well, punishing so means what? Dismissing her or arresting and prosecuting? Arresting and prosecuting her for dismissing her, that is a prerogative of the president. But mm. I would want to believe that, knowing who the president is, this woman shouldn't survive until 12 noon today. Knowing who the president this woman should be dismissed. Knowing who the president is, I would call that this woman should not survive after 12, 12 noon today. And also the police should swing into action quickly, you know, take her into their custody, interrogate her, take the firearm from her. That is one thing they should have done since last night. They should have actually uh, taken her firearm license. Once it is taken from you, the IGP can instruct that it should be done. Or the minute, I mean, yeah, the IGP can actually do that. Seize her firearm by way of taking the license you've given her because it is not a right to carry a firearm in Ghana. It is mm. a privilege. Mm. And so that privilege can, can always be taken, be taken from you. It's like a private license. And so if this woman is not used as an example, people will come to polling centers with pump action guns with the idea of that when I come under threat, I will shoot, I will do what I have to do, and that would be probably preparing the grounds for uh, what we might not be able to uh, control if it spills mm. into something else. And so for me, I do believe that this woman should not uh, survive up to 12 o'clock because what she did, reprehensible, uh, disgrace to her colleagues in, you know, the executive, you know, uh, her colleague woman and the legislative arm of government and all that. I mean, then to Ghana, Uh, okay, we're hoping we can reconnect with him. Okay, there he is. Quickly, uh, so I know that the privilege for owning a gun or holding a firearm is granted by the government through the Ministry of for, uh, the Interior. The Interior Minister will sign for it. As he speaks now, we have a substantive Minister for Interior, which is Lawyer Ambruderi. And then there's also a Minister for Interior at the Presidency, Mr. Brian Champon. I'm looking at which of the two of them is able to authorize for an individual to hold a firearm. And now that we've seen this, what it could mean going forward for people who want to have the privilege to own a firearm. What do you think? Well, usually, I mean, for, for this conversation, it, it would be Ambrose Derry, an honorable Ambrose Derry. But yeah, honorable Ambrose Derry, but to a certain extent, the police are also able to grant licenses. I mean, this is transferred. This is also something that they could do, but largely the Ministry of the Minister of the Interior, i.e. Ambrose Derry, uh, must be the one who could uh, give permission for this firearm to be licensed, to be issued to this woman if he didn't do it. But I mean, it will be done within his jurisdiction. And so it is a belief that Honorable Ambrose Derry would look at this, you know, the situation and the uh, acts that the firearm license, once the license is taken, you cease to be a firearms bearer in Ghana. So, and so does it mean, you, so, so does it mean, for example, that if Honorable Ambrose Derry refuses to sign uh, to give you the privilege to hold a gun, Honorable Brian the Champion could sign, given that the fact that they are both ministers at par at the Interior Ministry? Is that possible? Uh, upon my checks, when it comes to Firearms dealership. When it comes, sorry, fire, firearms be carrying a firearm and dealership. Uh, the the law is very clear. The minister of the interior, Brian Achampon, uh, is the minister. Uh, you know, at the interior, not the minister of the interior. And so we need to be, you know, uh, very careful here. And so with firearms. The law is explicit, it's clear. Not even the deputy, none of them, apart from Honorable Ambrose Derry, who might sometimes ground some of these things, it has to be elevated to the chairman of the National Security Council, i.e. the president. And so I doubt you would have, uh, you know, Brian Achampong 
Thankfully, we are not hearing too much of Brian Achampon now since he was sent there. So I want to believe that uh, he won't get himself involved in this uh, murky waters mm -hmm. and then leave it for, you know, those who have to deal with it, to deal with it this morning, hoping that by 12 noon, this woman, even if they have to drive her out of parliament, I don't know what they have to do. But after the executive, I believe the president will have to act. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Grateful for your time. Adam Bono is a security expert and he's been speaking to us. Um, 12 mm -hmm. noon, that's what he mm -hmm. says. But the students will be writing their exams uh, yeah. by 12, right? Exactly. Or they would have taken a break. They would have taken a break. I'm sure they would have finished. Well, I'm not so sure. 9, nine, to, 12. 9, yes. 9 yes. to 12. Yes. 9, yes. 9 to 12. Yeah. And then, 12. then they will so take a break and then come we'll on from, come back I think, 2 to 5 or so. Let's see what happens. I'm very sad for the presidents, unfortunately. Because Why? not too long ago, yeah. we had a deputy minister mm. resign from his post mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he also got mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. some kind mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. controversy. And now this is happening as well. And it's very close to elections. Mm -hmm. Is <laughs> resigning enough? That's the question on the minds of the public. Well, because yeah. people think that if pastors and others can be prosecuted, we're asking people from to from sweep the, the road and clean the gutters <clears throat> for flouting the COVID rules. Is yeah, resigning enough? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. Anyway, yeah. so.